I mean, more than half of our clients are first-time buyers. So that speaks to, to the market being excited about home ownership. Hello and welcome to the guest segment on Africa Business Radio. I am Chukunonsu Modi. Today we journey to South Africa, specifically looking at home ownership. Now, findings from Uber Group have shown that owning your home has become more affordable and attainable since the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, as the home buying trend has increased, potential home buyers looking to get in on the buying action may still be wondering what the minimum requirements are to own a home and if they are in fact eligible. Joining me to speak about the minimum requirements for a home loan in South Africa is Regional Sales Manager over Group, Natasha Champions. Hello, Natasha. Big welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Hello, listeners. Okay. Now, it was interesting to read that owning your own home has become more affordable and attainable since onset of the COVID pandemic. How is this? What exactly increased the home buying, you know, trend, especially at the pandemic period? So I think from a South African perspective, it would be linked to our prime lending interest rates, okay. which have reduced exponentially since um, since the pandemic. And also, I think people from a work from home uh, view in mind are focusing on purchasing in the outlying areas on the outskirts of our big cities hmm. where there's a bit more value for money. Okay, okay. All right. Now, can you give us statistics with how much it has improved? That's a home buying trend. Yeah, so, you know, stats are ever changing. But certainly our volumes have increased in 2021 by mm-hmm. about 30%. Mm-hmm. They are normalizing, but we are still finding um, a higher intake volume uh, and rand value volume than we were looking at pre-COVID. So I think, you know, with the pandemic, people have re-looked at their living situations and try to reassess what they need, what they require. And with the reduced interest rates, assisting affordability, having a new idea of potentially entering the the market as opposed to renting. I mean, more than half of our clients are first-time buyers. So that speaks to, to the market being excited about home ownership. Okay. Now, when this starts uh, that you're given, does this mean or are you saying that property investment is one top opportunity in South Africa? Absolutely. You know, property is a long term investment. Um, the, the old saying goes safe as houses. Mm-hmm. So, so yes, I think if you want to mitigate kind of currency volatility and that type of thing as a savings mechanism, property investment is, is quite stable and actually performing quite well internationally. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Now, Let's talk about challenges now. For you know, I know we are talking about future homeowners, those that want to get currently. But for those that already own homes in South Africa, are there any challenges they face? As a homeowner in South Africa, I mean, I think I think home, home ownership comes with um, with certain responsibilities. Mm. You have to factor in all the auxiliary costs of being a, a, a homeowner. Uh, and that's the same around the world. You know, it's not an African issue. It's not a South African issue. Um, things like maintenance, mm, things yes. like utilities, uh, things like uh, rates and taxes. You know, as a, as a tenant, these aren't concerns. But the offset of that is creating wealth as opposed to making your landlord wealthy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I like that. I like that creating wealth. Okay, now with this challenges you have mentioned, let's talk about the minimum requirements of getting a home loan for especially especially for those who are looking to. Um, what are they in South Africa currently? So, so currently, and I, and I think probably also internationally, the banks will look at two factors when uh, looking at a home loan approval assessment. So number one is going to be your credit score. Okay. So your credit score is the bank's um, frame of reference and an indication of your current financial behavior. And that is how they assess risk. So they'll have eyes on two years worth of your payment profile history. So every single one of your accounts, if you've missed a repayment three months ago, 
those banks are going to know about it. And that's going to increase um, your risk profile to them when considering lending you potentially, you know, large sums of money over a 20-year term. So uh, my first tip to aspiring homeowners would, would be to understand your credit score, find out how it looks, and take the necessary steps to increase it if it's below the threshold. Uh, secondly, affordability. So, you know, the calculation, I can only speak to South African banks, is going to be 30% of your gross income, which is what they will allocate to a monthly repayment. In addition to that, they're going to see what you've got left over mm. after tax, after your current expenses. We refer to this as net surplus income. That also has to be sufficient enough. They will work on whichever is the lower. You know, first time buyer, young professional might have a low gross income, but could have significantly less expenses mm. than potentially a more mature applicant. Mm. So it's, it's, but, but having said that, a, a more mature applicant might have a higher salary, but might have significantly higher expenses. That's why it's so important to align yourself with um, a home loan comparison service like Uber Home Loans to assess these things before you embark upon your home ownership journey. All right. Okay, there's something I saw about a pre-qualification certificate. Can you explain this more? How does it help um, future homeowners? So I think education equals empowerment. Mm. And if as a, an ex, aspiring homeowner, you understand your credit score and you understand your affordability, it's going to help you in, in many ways. But here, here are my top two. Number one, if you're negotiating with an agent or even privately directly with a seller, your pre-qualification certificate is your passport to purchase. Mm -hmm. That is going to set you aside from any other buyer and it's going to tell your seller that you are a serious buyer and you have done your homework up front and that indeed once you put pen to paper on that offer to purchase the home you know that that deal is going to go through oh. and number two you are going to shop in the correct price range you're not going to go to market with home ownership dreams in the millions when maybe you qualify for, for 500,000. Mm. You know, mm. to understand your affordability means less heartbreak. Mm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Exactly. True. True. But how do they get this pre-qualification certificate? Is there somewhere they go to to have it or? Yes, absolutely. So you'd go onto the Uber website. So that's www.uber. Uber is spelled O-O-B-A. Okay. .co.za. All right. All you right. would register and then you would be guided to a consultant that can assist you by requesting the relevant documentation, the pay slips, the credit score information, Um and depending on where the applicant is domiciled, it might be an exclusion because we are, we're unable to, to, to pull a credit report on a non-South African citizen. Mm -hmm. But we can certainly assist with affordability. Okay. Okay. Now let's talk about budget. I mean, you said something about the bank looking at not just your credit history, but what is left after taking the money. So that means budget plays a really important um, role in, you know, getting a home. Now, can you share tips on how future homeowners can budget so they don't fall short when it's time? I think firstly, it's important to, to pay every single account you have the minimum monthly um, repayment at the very least on time every single time. If you're in a position to pay up and close any accounts, it's going to reduce your fixed monthly expenses. Okay. And I think in, in terms like anything that's worthwhile, any dream worth pursuing, save, you know, mm. put money aside, save money for costs. And, and certainly if you can um, get a deposit together, that's going to go a far way, not only in your chances of approval, but also in the terms of the loan. Mm. So, you know, uh, better interest rates, mm. for example, mm -hmm. because once again, it's all linked to risk profile. Mm. Mm. Save. 
I like that. If you're putting in some of your own money, the banks will be more likely to to look at that application favorably. Mm, true, true. They will want to give you the loan because you know you've lowered your risk profile. Yes. You see. Correct. Okay. Now, lastly, what is the government helping future homeowners too as well? Is are there any you know initiative that can help them achieving their dreams of getting a home? So in South Africa, uh, the Housing Finance Corporation or the Housing Finance Council, uh, our government is providing a rebate to first-time buyers, uh, depending on various factors. Okay. So um, there have to be first-time buyers. Unfortunately, they have to be South African citizens, okay. and they have to be um, earning below a certain threshold to qualify for that rebate, which will be paid um, back to the uh, purchaser uh, once he has had a bond granted. Mm. So what we actually do at Uber Home Loans is a, a FLISP assessment. That's what the, the subsidy is called, FLISP. We'll assess the client's edu- eligibility while we assess his affordability to streamline that process. Mm. Mm. All right. All right, that's fine. That's perfect. Thank you so much, Natasha, for coming on the show. Um, I'm sure our South African audience have learned a lot from you. Fantastic. Thanks for having me. Okay. That was Natasha Champions, Regional Sales Manager, Uber Group. More coming your way. Stay tuned.